I guess we'll do some introductions first. My name is Chris Lane. My stage name is the Crazy Agent. Uh, my name is Nathan, and my stage name is Tony Firestone. I'm Josh Levitt. My stage name is Luna Jax. I'm Jane Raider, but my stage name is Axel Two Dots or Glitch Bomb. It doesn't really care. And my stage name is Jupiter Maroon, and I'm not telling you my real name. Any questions? How's your day today? <laughs> Reasonably well. I'm running on four hours of sleep. It's a thing. Oh, nice. What's your question? What impression? Also, no, it's a musician's panel. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm boring. I apologize. How do you mean? Very careful. Um, I guess if there's no questions yet, we'll just go through and talk about experience and stuff. Uh, I don't produce music yet, but I've been DJing for three or so years. I think it's been three years I've been producing music. I think, at least, yeah, I think it's been three years. So I've been producing music well for like the last year and I've been producing it poorly for like four years before that. <laughs> I've been making music for almost a year now but I still suck at it so. Um, and I think I've been doing music for about four years but if music like for the whole spectrum of music I've been playing piano since I was like seven so I don't even know how long that is. I don't do any math right now. All right, so I have a question for the audience. How many of you are music makers? Okay, so there are a few music... How many of you want to be music makers? Okay. So, for those of you who are music makers or want to be music makers, what are some questions that you have for us of th either things that you don't know how to do or things you want to know how to do or things that you're trying to do but find yourself sucking at it and want to be better? Because I find that a lot. So, lyrics, music, or what, what specifically? Okay, go for it. Uh, so there's, there's tons of different ways you can approach it. Like, depending on the person, you kind of come up with your own theory of how making music works. For me, I usually, um, I start on the piano. And I try to work up some chords that sound good and that kind of sound original. So you do that, and then you can start getting into sound design, which is the actual sound. You know, besides a piano, you know, like a, a synthesizer or whatever. Um, you kind of go there after you created the whole tune, or at least that's what I do. And then after that, I start making the structure of the song, like how the song works. You know, the intro and then the verse, and then the chorus or drop or whatever. And after you've done that, you kind of want to master it, which is basically a fancy word for saying make it sound professional, <laughs> it, for lack of a better term. But um, that's basically a quick overview of how I make a song. Um, does anybody else have a different way of making? So for me, <clears throat> songwriting, I mean, you got to have inspiration first. But a lot of people are like, I'm waiting for inspiration to make this song. I'm waiting for it to hit me like a meteor out of the sky, and you're more likely to get hit with a meteor out of the sky. So, uh, one of the things that really helps as a musician is to set arbitrary goals for yourself. And what that means is basically, for me, I'll say, okay, this month I want to write two songs. No one's telling me I have to write two songs in a month, but I know that I have 30 days or 28 days or 31 days to figure out how I'm going to get two songs written in that month. And so I'll set that goal and set mini goals to get up to that step. And uh, so one day I'll sit down with my guitar and I'll, you know, strum some chords and hum along with it. and. When I first started doing it, I felt like I was making a fool of myself in front of the mirror, trying to come up with different songs. But the more you do it, 
you realize that the good ideas stick and the bad ideas fly away and you forget about them. And so as you're working on trying to put together a tune to come up with a good lyric, you gotta figure out, you gotta do it so much that the filters come off of your brain and you're not afraid to make crap because if you make a lot of crap, there's gonna be some good stuff in there too. And take the, take what you learn from the good stuff and stop doing the bad stuff. And don't be afraid to fail because that's, that's what it takes. It wouldn't be quick either. No, it, it would not be quick. Well, I guess for me, it started out just random notes when I was a pure newbie at it. Uh, but then eventually I got to the point where now I can actually hear in my head of what I want to do, and then I usually jot that down one part of the time and then just make it all collage together. And it takes forever for me. I, I take forever to make songs, let's just put it that way. Really what I do is just I just make a couple beats. That turns, that slowly turns into a song mostly. And it never goes how I want to go, so, so yeah. All right, next question. So when I make music, at the very end, when I finally finish making it, I always feel like there's something more I could have added to it. Is that even Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. Especially if you go back to a few years and, like, I made this, I could have done so much more. Uh, as an artist, which everyone is an artist in their own right, you find that you're never done with your art. And knowing when to say, okay, I've gone far enough, and otherwise I'm going to be wasting my time if I go further. That is a hard thing to learn. And so it's okay to go back and tweak things you know, months later or afterward, but if you get stuck on the same song, or if you never finish a song, or if you never finish an art piece, then you're going to get stuck where you are. It's, it's really important to, to do something and if you're spending too much time on it, finish it. Tie off the loose ends and either put it out there or put it in a drawer and move on because that's what, that's what helps the most. I do have a question with vocals. When uh, producing music and using your own vocals, what types of, uh, uh, how do you know when you're on the right key signature and, well, just the basics of making sure your voice actually fits with the song? Is there any recommendation? Or tips? At least what comes to mind is. I'm trying to think of the right word to say. I'm trying to think of the right word to Okay, so I'm very much a vocal guy. All my songs have words. And uh, that's an excellent question because some people write songs that are too high for them to sing, or if they're writing for someone else, say they're collaborating. Uh, it's really easy to write something that doesn't fit somebody's voice. And so when you're writing a song and you're coming up with a melody, if it starts feeling strained and it starts feeling hard, change the key. I mean, if you're a guitar guy like me, a capo is a really easy way to change your key. Or if you're on the piano, I mean, if you're playing in a C, try playing it in a G instead. And uh, I mean, drastic changes, and then work your way to a zone that feels comfortable and sounds good. So I mean, do recordings of yourself while you're doing this that aren't necessarily for anybody else, but are just for you. So you can hear what sounds, oh, my voice sounds better here than it sounds over there. That would be my answer to how do you write for, for your own vocal range. Yeah, that's better than If you're making a song and you're using any, whatever program you have, like if you have to use like sort of a stock sound they have because you think it sounds good, like how do you make it sound like your own? Is there any like filtering or editing you can do with the sound to make it sound like your own? Oh yes. Because that's been something I've been trying to experiment with and trying to do the keyboard triumph. Oh yeah, they always come with these basic plugins that you can change different filters. It's fairly simple to do, you know, just learning how to use it. You know, when you get good enough, then you can start making your own stuff with it, but if it supports that, of course, but it makes sense. Uh, I'm just saying, Porter Robinson used Fruity LSD, which is like 
the most basic MIDI synthesizer that you could find on FL Studio. He used that for the main sound in Sad Machine, and it's like a super popular song. But nobody knows that it's like super basic, but it sounds really good. So don't be afraid to use like normal, you know, like basic stock sound. Yeah, there's nothing know. wrong with presets. Chris. <laughs> Now, one thing that a lot of people are afraid of with stock sounds is they sound like stock sounds. And if you want them to sound less like stock sounds, but still use them, which I think is what you're looking for, uh, a good combination of reverb, delay, and EQ can make any sound fit into your mix, right? And that, that's a lot into mixing. So, it, I mean, if you've got this high, really whiny, grating saw synth, you're going to cut off your low end on it and let it be high and whiny, and that'll help put some reverb so it sinks down into your mix a little bit, so it has a sense of the space instead of being this, I mean, this dry sound that's like, it's coming out of a computer, right? And then delay can give you a sense of echo of the room, or it can be used for effect, and uh, panning, where you put it in your mix in relation to the other things really plays a big part in it. So, Anytime you're adding any sound, be it stock or an expensive sound library, you definitely want to make sure you're playing with the reverb, the EQ, delay, panning, everything. Quick question, what order uh, would these plugins be? And, like reverb, delay, and uh, EQ. Like what is the best order in your opinion? Well, for me personally, I usually add the reverb on the last. Well, now that I've kind of changed the way I do it. it well, I learned how to do it better. <laughs> uh, well, basically for my reverb, I send it all to one channel, and then I do certain EQing to make it uh, less muddy, and that makes the reverb better on that. The delay, I haven't used delay very much as of late. I'd say reverb and delay do make you sound really good. However, if you add too much delay mm. and too much reverb and it's too loud, it'll destroy everything. <laughs> yes. Learning from experience. Amen, hallelujah. <laughs> no, that's so true. You can go too far on things, but don't be afraid to push it far initially and then pull it back. Um, as far as order of things, a good rule of thumb is if you start with EQ, then you're only working with the sound with those frequencies that you want in your mix. Yes. So I mean, if you're gonna high pass something and only let high sounds through, do that first. Or if you're only gonna get let low sounds through, or if you're chopping out the mids, like on a kick drum or something, you want those sub bass sounds, but you don't want anything from the middle in there, otherwise it muddies up your mix. But you want some high, some high frequencies in there to give it that punch, so you get your, your thump in the chest and the punch in the ears from the kick drum. I mean, I would say almost all the time EQ first, and then you can also EQ later. You don't have to do these things only once. I mean, I'm ashamed to say there's one, I don't know if I'm ashamed to say it, you can tell me if I should be ashamed afterward, is I had one track that had four different EQs on it. In a different, it was a track with like 11 different plugins on that track, and I was probably doing it wrong. Probably should have side chained some things. Well, I think it would depend on each different channel. It was all on the same channel. It was all on the same track. Okay, yeah. EQ, <laughs> reverb, more EQ. I, it was it was an exciting track. <laughs>
I think it's very clear who has the most talent that's sitting up here right now. A different talent. He's playing a guitar right now. Where's your instrument? Well, I'm sorry I can't bring a drum set. <laughs> I can't you. No one said no. Where's your own one? one. Well, there's the problem. Okay. So well, that was fun. I'm just going to noodle. You guys can ask questions. Yes, questions. Yes, questions. For the panel. What's been one of the greatest challenges you've faced uh, while doing your music and works, and how have you overcome it? Astronomy Burger, I don't know where he is right now. Are you meaning like what we've encountered that's really hard? Yeah, like just in your musical Biggest career. Biggest challenge right? in our career, go. And how have you overcome it? Teasing the fans. Well, I guess overcoming my quality of my music is my OCD about it. Because I spend forever on these tracks. So the hardest thing for me initially, or has been, uh, there are a lot of different things. Music has always been kind of a therapeutic thing for me. And uh, I think the hard thing for me is when I start writing music and it's for somebody else and not for me. Because you can hear it in those songs. Uh, it's, I like to come from a place of authenticity with my music and mean what I'm singing what I write and there have been a couple different times when I've fallen into a rut where it's like I'm making music for the subscribers or for the likes or for the SoundCloud hearts or whatever it may be and uh, I think I am the happiest when I make music for me about things that I care about and I have the most success when I make things about when I make songs about things that I care about because it comes from a place here and people can hear that uh, as opposed to a place of greed. And so <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the biggest struggle for me is reminding myself not to be greedy and to be authentic. Now since I don't actually produce music, mine's not as like complicated as their problems are. My biggest problem is like saying, all right, I'm done looking for new music for the set. I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna put something together. And then I have to avoid taking all of this music and just throwing it into a pile. I have to sit down and think, all right, this song's a good intro, this song builds from that, this song builds from that. This song's really good, it's loud, it bangs, it's a good middle bit, and then you know, sit down and actually construct it. That's probably my biggest challenge. My biggest challenge is forgetting everything. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, I haven't really, I haven't been in the music producing business long enough to like have a hard problem. Like the hardest thing I had to overcome was making a song for a collaboration album. I didn't make it. <laughs> That's about it. Okay, now I remembered it, so thank you. Um, okay, so the hardest thing for me when I when I started making music was that I was comparing myself to like big names. Like, it's, I'm gonna sound really naive because I was naive when I was like 11 or something, but. Um, when I saw Skrillex on YouTube, I instantly thought I want to be Skrillex, which is a horrible thing to do. <laughs> so, yeah, um, at the beginning, that's, that was my mentality. But when I started to like actually uh, like make music, I found that I could make music that sounded good to me. Because when I tried to make music, I, was, I would always be like, does this sound like Skrillex? Again, don't do that. <laughs> Um, but 
after a while, like if you stop thinking that you have to compare yourself to big names or you have to compare yourself to anyone, you can be your own artist, you know? People will follow you because you, you are you. So then, I, you know, you kind of think about it, you think, well, I bet Skrillex or Deadmau5 didn't think, you know, I want to be Daft Punk. No, because they don't sound like Daft Punk. They sound like Deadmau5, you know, they sound like Skrillex. I don't want people to be like, oh, Jupiter Maroon, he sounds like Skrillex. You know, finding your own type of music and style and sound, I think that's one of the big things. That's the biggest challenge for me. And it, it, it only became recently where I kind of thought, like, who I want to be as me, you know, what I want my music to be like. And uh, that's, that's really hard for me. And, I didn't think that was inspirational at all. <laughs> okay. What you said really hits home with me. Like, sometimes we strive so much to be like our idols, you know, or try and be like someone else. Uh, and finding that internal motivation, find, I mean, being okay with what we're doing is really what it's all about. On a, on a same note though, I would caution against striving for too much uniqueness. I mean, the, it's okay to do something that somebody's done before. If it's been done well, then, then do it. <laughs> I saw hands. Facebook on their Facebook statuses why can't I be talented and I'm saying well you put it in a Facebook status instead of going for it here's the secret to being great at anything and I by no means am saying that I have achieved this this is a daily struggle it takes time and it takes dedication and those hours that we put into social media, if it's not social media promoting our, our sound or our music or making connections, the hours we put into watching funny YouTube videos or hours we put into, you know, into watching TV, there are so many hours wasted in that respect. If you want to be great at anything, you have to put in time. How many of you have seen the movie Oh, uh, no, what is it? The one that talks about 10,000 hours. No? Oh, wait, I've read the book. Okay. It's actually a book, yeah, Malcolm Gladwell. Okay. Uh, yeah. Outliers. Well, they, Outliers, well, they did a movie as well of Outliers. So, 10,000 hours is what it takes. I don't know if any of you have sat down and figured out how, how many how many days, how many years it would take you to reach 10,000 hours in anything. I don't think I've reached 10,000 hours in anything that I've done. So if you want to make a living at this, it has to be your life. I mean, you have to eat, breathe, sleep, music. You have to be practicing. You have to be producing. 
it has to be everything you do if you're going to have a shot at it because this isn't something that everybody needs. It's not like being a farmer, someone needs your food. Music, you have to be so good that people want it. Just don't burn yourself out either. Well, if you burn out, then it's you either got to push, make the decision to push through it or to quit. Because it's going to come if you're going to, if you're putting in the time to put in 10,000 hours, you're going to have plenty of times where you'll burn out. you got to have a break. you got to have a, you either push through it or you quit. Break. I, it's okay to watch an occasional Netflix video, but I mean, you binge your whole series, that's different than a break. <laughs> I'm guilty. So what, is, what exactly is burning out? Is it like... Media doesn't like you to burn out, or you just burn out of inspiration. Go for it. Yeah, the, the second where you, you get so burnt out, where it's like I don't really work on this anymore. I just want to like do something else. That's kind of like the burnout feeling. It stops being fun. It, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that can happen. Uh, but you can also bring the fun back into it. I mean, sometimes it stops being fun, but you got to push through anyway. The way you bring fun back into it is you try something new.